Hey, what's up everyone? My name's Chris Winter and today I'm gonna to take a look at one of my favorite and most used lenses, the Sigma 30 millimeter F 1.4. So this is the older version of the 31.4, but I thought I'd make a review anyway because it's such a ripper of a lens. And it's actually very similar to the new art version. And guys, I've taken over 20 sample images with this Sigma 31.4. If you wanna see those images, I'll put a link in the description box below and you can check them out at your own time. Anyway, let's review this Sigma 30. One of my favorite features of this Sigma is actually its build quality. So even though this lens has an aperture of f1.4, it's definitely not what I'd describe as a big lens. In fact, I'd probably call it quite a small lens. And there are actually some really nice features that it's got as well. Firstly, we've got a metal mount on the back and on the top here, we've got this focus distance window, which is really good for manually focusing. The focus ring on the front though has never been as smooth as I'd really like. It's always felt a little bit gritty or a little bit rough, which is not the best thing, but it does have a fairly long focus throw, which is good if you're doing manual focus again. So overall, I think the build quality is great. I've been using these Sigma 30 lenses, I've actually owned two of them, for around about four years now, and they've really stood the test of time, so build quality is fantastic. So on a crop sensor body like this Canon T3R here, 30 millimeters equates to around about 50 millimeters, or a normal field of view. As you can see here, this is what 30 millimeters looks like. Well, I mean, it's not super wide, but it's definitely not a tele lens. So just for comparison's sake, here's what 18 millimeters looks like. And here's what 30 looks like again. And here's what 50 looks like. So 30 is right in the middle there. Now, as with almost any f1.4 lens, one of the best things about these lenses is just how easy it is to get some really nice bokeh. And that's no different with this little Sigma. At f1.4, this produces an incredibly shallow depth of field. Uh, the bokeh is lovely as well. It really does allow you to take some really creative control of your shot. And a lot of people ask me pretty much every day what lens I use to film my YouTube videos. And I've actually been using this Sigma 30 for nearly two years. It really allows me to separate myself from the background in all of my shots. So the lens itself has a minimum focus distance of around about 40 centimeters, which is actually pretty far away. So don't expect any ultra close-ups with this lens. As you can see, it's definitely not a macro lens, but it can provide some nice photos of small objects, simply because it does have that very shallow depth of field, which allows for great separation. Now, unfortunately, one area where the Sigma 31.4 is let down is its autofocus speed and reliability. Now, it's definitely not the worst performer in the world, but it does struggle to lock onto its target from time to time. In low light, I pretty much only use manual focus with this lens because it does struggle quite a lot once it gets dark. But if you are in broad daylight, uh, autofocus isn't too bad, especially if you knock it down to around f2.8. You know what's funny though? This lens performs excellently in autofocus for video. Paired up with my Canon 70D, autofocus is really consistent, even at wide apertures. I've been using face tracking autofocus for most of my videos with this lens, and it works 98% of the time. And it also allows me to do some really great focus pulls on these lenses, all with autofocus that I do in my videos like this. So as I said, this is the older version of the Sigma 30mm f1.4. The new art version came out just a few years ago. And what that means is that you can pick up these old Sigma 30s really cheap on places like eBay, Gumtree, and Amazon. So if you keep your eye out, you'll definitely be able to find one for under $300. And if you look closely, maybe even under $200, which is a huge bargain for a nice 1.4 lens. So enough talking about it, let's take a look at some image and video samples. Like I said before, you can really get some dreamy shots with this lens. Having that lovely normal view and a shallow depth of field makes it a great lens for both portraits and street photography. Okay, to be totally honest, it's not the sharpest lens I own and there are definitely some chromatic aberrations for sure, but it's still a fantastic performer. And if you guys wanna check out any video samples, what you can do is watch any of my old videos because out of the 100 or so videos that I made, pretty much all of them, the ones where I'm talking to the camera, were filmed on this Sigma 30 1.4. But overall, if you're just looking for a lens that can take some really nice shots with that lovely normal field of view at a very shallow depth of field, definitely check out the Sigma 31.4. If you guys wanna see way more sample images I've taken with this Sigma 31.4, make sure to check out the link in the description box below because I'll put that there. If you guys like the video, I'd love it if you leave a thumbs up because that's always appreciated. And subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you have a fantastic day. See ya.